lifestyles of the strange and exotic. Spent 15 minutes hobbling together a tripod haul. <laughs> Even though I have like 15,000 of them, it's never quite the right height. So, you are precariously perched on multiple items. And thus, I shall now show you my items. <laughs> Randomly picking off the top precariously. This was over a couple of weeks because I'm still trying to hunt stuff for like grandma because the place she is keeps losing the clothes, which reminds me I have to put that on the list. Uh, so it's like, and it's hard to shop for like grandmas. I don't know why, but it's so much easier to shop for me. So I found this, and I think this was on the dollar rack. And I like the color scheme. Yep, it was a dollar. Mm. And it's a velour thingy. That doesn't seem to want to. Here it is. I hate it when the tags are like in between. It's like two layers of cloth. And it's kind of a shirt type thing. <laughs> not quite a jacket, not quite a shirt. But it's reminiscent of that zippered hoodie that I had. So, I had, still have, it's feet away from us. <laughs> and this came from Charter Club, size medium. I'm thinking it's a guy's, so I don't know. But it looked warm and comfy, and it's in a color scheme that I like. <laughs> so, I was kind of happy about that. Now that the cold weather is upon us. But by the time you see this, it'll probably be summer. <laughs> and it's soft and beautiful. Is it soft on the inside, too? Mm. And the next thing I got, I just sort of got, not necessarily on a whim, but they look like they might fit. And I picked them up, and I'm pretty sure these were a buck. And I wasn't quite sure, but they do have a little spoiling, and they're size 8s from one... Five one. This I think that's what it says. It's in such a fancy font you can't read it. But I wasn't quite sure if they were like grown up sizes or juniors. But I put them on and if I don't button the very top button, I'm <laughs> I'm good. But it's like, boy, how many how many levels of security do you need to your trousers? You know what I mean? So they were comfy and rather cute. Kind of like the insides. Gotta go through my pile of clothing there. But the pro the problem, of course, with these, if you gotta go, make sure you know way ahead of time, because by the time you get out of your pants, you're like, oh, not the smartest design for trousers, really. Ooh. And the next thing on the pile is literally what I got for Grandma, because she has not too many nightgowns. So this is what I got for her as a nightgown, and I think it was half off. So it was like two, three bucks or something like that. Where their, their night clothes and stuff were three dollars. Now they're like four fifty or something like that. Still very annoying. And it's just a simply basic, but this is like a two extra grande. So I, I don't know. <laughs> It'll be more than plenty big enough for her. Because <laughs> it's kind of funny. When you picture me, it was, I can't remember who it was. If it was Frank and Mary Beth or Jen and Craig dropping me off at Grandma's. And they're expecting someone that looks like my spare grandma. Little round person. Think, picture Mrs. Claus. You know, if you saw a Viking Mrs. Claus, that's what Grace was. This isn't what walked around the corner. This is like Amazon's <laughs> big, tall, not like fat, but like husky woman. Like, how, what the fuck? <laughs> what side of the family did you come from? Because it went from that. So it's like, I'm picturing obviously bigger than me, but I can't quite wrap my head around how big it actually is. So I don't know if she's going to be swimming in this or, you know, if it'd be just right, because it's hard to find things that fit you, let alone somebody else, because you can kind of judge on yourself, so 
I think it'd be quite roomy. <laughs> so, but it's better than nothing. So that is for Grandma. I'll put that in the pile for that. Now these, trying to find trousers, I kind of was, I kind of got for Grandma. I had in mind to get for Grandma. But I'm like, well, I don't know again what size. So I think I'm just going to let Mother handle this stuff because she seems to be apparently better at it than I. So I'm like, for the hell of it, I'll put them on. They're quite comfy on me, so I'm not quite sure how comfy they'd be on her, being that I am a size 8. And these say large from Blair. I think that's a magazine, isn't it? I think so, because my spare grandma used to get stuff from Blair. And they're just a hideous pair of <laughs> trousers. So I might just knock about and have them as night pants, because these are so not my color for, like, public... <laughs> for public wear. So... I'll keep these for me then. And I think these are a buck, being that it was a gray tag. Ugh. They'll be nice and warm for the winter, though. The poking the what's it? So, yep. <laughs> I'm not a fan of beige. And. The next thing I got, I got, why are mice so expensive? I swear, I like to have, well, yeah, I kind of like to have a mouse per computer type of thing, because you because especially when you have that little dongle for the wireless mice, which just makes it better for, like, travel, you don't want to, like, lose the dongle, so I have two laptops. So I have my workhorse that I do all my editing on, and then the one, the Mac that I showed you in the review there. So I have, like, a wireless mouse for each, <laughs> and it's like ten bucks for a wireless mouse. <laughs> but when I have to go into the living room for, like, the old computer that's attached to the printers, I just sort of inherit people's desktops. But I'm like, people are like... If some one thing goes wrong, they think the entire unit's trash. And I'm like, I can gut these things, and I have so many Frank computers, it's like frightening. So one of my Frank computers is attached to the printer, but I needed a mouse. So they happen to have, and it happened to be half off. So I paid a whopping dollar bill for, and it's an optical one too, which is good, because rollerballs are a pain in the ass. A random mouse, USB mouse. I think these are fairly cheap anyways the not wireless ones but for a buck at least now I'll have one I can keep out there instead of trying to disconnect one and connect it to another <laughs> pain in the booty <sighs> so yay I haven't tried it to make sure it works yet but it shouldn't be a and it doesn't look all that used and like you don't see like fingerprint wear and even on down below so it might have been like an extra one that comes with like the keyboards and stuff which I never seem to have enough mice, but I have keyboards out the wazoo. Hmm. And the last thing I got, I w almost debated, well, I was going to get this anyways, but then I saw The Lost Boys, and I have not yet seen the movie, but they wanted six bucks for it. And I'm like, half of my brain's like, it's only freaking six bucks, and it's like 15 bucks for a normal movie. <laughs> but it's like, cheap bastard brain one out. So I left The Lost Boys behind. <laughs> Because it's like, I, I think I've, I've lost a few points on my goth card. But the one that did come home with me, I remember seeing many a year ago. Uh, and I don't know what the hell channel. I think it was PBS, and I don't know why it was playing. And I, re I don't remember seeing the first part of it. But I saw, like, the last part of it, but I don't think I saw the very end. But it was fascinating what I did saw. And it was... Duh. So I now got to see it all the way through. And I was not disappointed. And I think Mother's like, oh, it's so boring, and the monkeys and the stuff like that. And it's still kind of, and I think I've got the, the book that I never got around to reading. And then they had uh, um, the sequel, uh, the preview to the sequel, 2010. And I'm like, crap, now I want to see 2010. But it's kind of funny to see Roy Scheider. <laughs> <laughs> the preview had Roy Scheider, or the guy from Jaws, and the guy that was, if anybody's a MacGyver fan, MacGyver's boss, who I always liked. He just seemed like a friendly, awesome dude. 
so all I see is MacGyver's boss with a silly Russian accent. <laughs> so I don't know if 2010 is going to be that much more interesting, but that's gonna, gonna kind of throw me. So for those few of you who might not know, 2001, still the grandest of all sci-fi movies. And this is a classic one. Sci-fi was awesome. And I thought it was coming out. I thought this was like 70s, you know, around the era of Star Wars. This came out in 1968. Must have been a good year. I <laughs> 2001 A Space Odyssey is a countdown to tomorrow, a roadmap to human destiny, and a quest for the infinite. infinite. It is a dazzling Academy Award winning visual achievement, and yes, I mean, that's why I thought it was a lot later, because and everything is a practical effect. There ain't no CG on this. I mean, this sort of kind of is. If you watch near the end, I'm not quite sure how they did that. Uh, but it's impressive. And if you know, like, how they did things, it's like... Uh, uh, visually, a compelling drama of man versus machine. A stunning meld of music and motion. And maybe the masterwork of s director Stanley Kubrick, who co-wrote the screenplay with Ar Arthur C. Clarke, who's the author of the book, and will likely entice, excite, inspire, and enthrall for generations. To begin his voyage into the future, Kubrick visits our prehistoric ape ancestry past, then leaps millennia, via one of the most mind-blowing jump cuts ever conceived, <laughs> into colonized space, and ultimately with ast astronaut Bowman, Kier Dulia? I wonder what nationality that is. In uncharted realms of space, and perhaps even into immortality, Open the pod bay doors, Hal. Let the awe and mystery of the journey unlike any other begin. And it's really fascinating because there's very, very little dialogue. It's mostly a visual movie, but there's just enough that you can glean the relationships between the two guys and then the two guys and Hal. And it, it's really a fascinating movie. It's, and you don't have to be an awesome sci-fi movie with and, and not... You can be an awesome sci-fi movie without the flash and the bang and the constant adrenaline rush. This is a thinking man sci-fi. I mean, if you want, like, balls to the wall, nothing but warp speed type excitement, you ain't getting it here. If you want to be, like, constantly fascinated and, like, intellectually stimulated, this is impressive. So now i got to get my hands on 2010. And there may or may not be one after that. If not a movie, I think there are other books. There might be a third one. I'm not quite sure. So, highly, highly recommend this if you're into any sort of sci-fi. If you're not already. <laughs> so, thank you for watching. Do remember to comment, rate, share, and subscribe. There's always room for more at The Strange and Exotic. See you next time. Bye.